so Saul, I, I remember from my, you know, Newtonian mechanics uh, <laughs> class in, in elementary college that if something is accelerating, it must have energy. If it's just traveling, you know, with nothing getting in its way, it, it doesn't necessarily have energy. It's just sort of moving. But acceleration implies energy. How surprised were you to discover that there was just a huge discrepancy in the universe and that maybe you were the only one who knew about it? <laughs> Well, it, I mean, it certainly was not what we set out to do, right? And so we were you know, working along, and of course, this is a very long time span that I'm describing where we were working for many, many years, uh, getting the experiment ready and beginning to collect data and plotting the data and then trying to calibrate the data. And then finally, at the very end, you start to look at the data and you know, first you see what looks like it's disagreeing with what you expected, but you know, you know that um, it's bound to happen when you first, you know, again, your experiment set up, you're gonna, you have to calibrate for a little while and get things going. And the more we calibrated, the more it didn't go away <laughs> until eventually after, you know, multiple months, we started to say, you know, this is, this is real. This is actually what we're, what we're seeing. All right, let's get uh, Saul's next slide up. So, so, so we begin to see how you solve the problem of detection. All right, so here's, here's a little piece of the universe. So what, so what you have to do is you have to say, well, let's uh, not look at one galaxy for 500 years. Uh, it's boring. Let's try and look at thousands of galaxies for hopefully a lot less than a year and actually get a reasonable shot at catching some supernova. And so, with a limited supply of telescopes and grad students, you had to use computers. <laughs> and you had to design these larger format cameras that would bring a lot of galaxies onto a small, what's a CCD chip, as you have in the back of a camera today. In a, you know, everybody's cameras all have CCD chips now. Right, exactly. right, right. So, uh, so this was actually one of the first images that we collected from, a, from this uh, four-meter telescope in Chile. So one of these big telescopes that you can find uh, in just a few places in the world at that time. And in a 10-minute exposure, what you really should be looking at is all those little blue specks in the background. Those are galaxies. Each one of those little blue specks is a galaxy. Um, and light has been traveling to us for about four billion years from each of those little specks. And those were the galaxies in which we wanted to find the new supernova. So now we had to find a speck of light amidst this field of galaxies. Okay, so, so now you've got your supernova. How do you use a supernova to measure or detect? And again, I'm going to ask the question, is this really great picture or is this data in a minute? Yep. How does a supernova give us an insight into whether there's, a, there's dark energy at work here? So if you can manage to find your supernova, then each supernova by itself tells you about one point in history, the time when it exploded, and it tells you how much the universe expanded since that one time. So now you're going to need tens, twenties of these guys at different times in history to tell you what the history of the expansion of the universe was. And what we want to know is how much was it slowing down, we thought. Of course, as you, as, you know, we've already given away the answer, uh, that we, that's not what we actually found. Each one, uh, supernova, when it explodes, um, it's, you can just read off by how bright it is, how far away it is. That's because we, uh, this particular kind of supernova are all about the same brightness at the peak. If you know how far away it is, you know how far back in time the event occurred because you know the speed that light's been traveling to reach us. So you already know when one of these things explodes and you measure its brightness, what time it went off, what time it exploded, how far, you know, four billion years back, five billion years back in time. Now the only other thing you want to know is how much has the universe stretched since the time of that explosion and there, it's amazing that it's, it's given to us also by the supernova because supernova, when they explode, look mostly blue, and that's a short wavelength of light. While that light travels to us in an expanding universe, anything that's not nailed down expands just with the universe, and that includes those wavelengths of light. So what was blue gets stretched, and by the time it reaches us, it looks red. So it's like the Doppler effect. Exactly. Only used in a, in a much different way. Exactly, and exactly how red it gets, what we call redshift, tells you exactly how much the universe has stretched since that particular explosion date. So there you go. You're going to get a Nobel for discovering the universe's stretch marks. <laughs> <laughs> wow.